Yo, what's poppin'? It's Tomathan, and in this video, I'll be ranking every single DPS based on their performance in Overwatch League Season 5. This was streamed live on this very YouTube channel, so if you would like to partake in the upcoming support tier list or any other streams, subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to click on this video, and I hope you enjoy Okay, but starting this DPS tier list, we are going to put in to the unplayed part. Aprita, Rota not play, Jimmy dipped. Um, Eileen also didn't play, because, um, Develop was racist. And Hacker didn't play, because Ro was playing Apex Legends while his team was playing the game. He's just a cosmetic, legit a cosmetic signing. Now, did anyone else not get playtime? I don't think so. I think everyone else played. If I put these guys... No, I don't have to stay there for this second. Did Architect play any DPS this year? Yes, he played one week when Alpha Yi was on his way to China from Korea. He filled him for... And it, and it was um at the beginning of Goats. Or not Goats, Jotes. At the beginning of Jotes, he pulled up. He didn't actually play that bad. He did play that one on a match, too. I remember that one. But that's, that's the only two he played. So I guess you could technically put him in unplayed, but he played, like, three matches... They're like three and a, and a bit. So I'll, I'll, I'll let him slide. I'll let him slide and put him in, I don't know, D tier probably or C tier or something when we get to it. Uh, I don't think anyone else is, is unplayed though. Um, Who's going D tier? The worst of the worst. Um, First up, that boy Gurio is going in here. Bro, straight up made Dallas look bad. That's crazy. That's insane. Also, I'd say Psycho did not look very good in his short stint. In his short stint uh, in stage one. Paris Eternal, all of them. Okay, what if I put Paris Eternal, all of them, except for Naga and Glister? Actually, Naga did not play very well. No, Naga did not play very well either. In his first, what, two? It was one week, right? He played two matches, maybe? Fuck. In terms of how I'm ordering these guys, though, I think if I was to rate the Paris, it's probably Dub, Malthel. I'm still going to put Naga ahead of Wub. I can put Naga... No, I'll just put him there. Me when I am good after two bad performances. That was insane. Like, they must have had it out for him immediately to, to just give him the boot right away. That was fucked up. You would think that they would not do that, maybe. Um, is anyone else going here? Mirror. Mirror on the Genji, the, the infamous four minute. Like, honestly, I'll put Mirror down. I'll put Mirror right here. The, the little bit he played DPS was pretty horrendous. I won't lie. Really did not look good. Um, Outside of that, I think that's probably it for D tier. This is like the detriment tier, right? So I'm like thinking, oh, I should do this. Stanced up. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm thinking develop could be here, but I won't do it. Naga only played against Shock and Mayhem. Boy had no chance to succeed. For real. On Paris. Like, oh my lord. They did him so dirty after such a, uh, like a, a pretty good season four, too. It made no sense. It's fucked up that you can just drop players like that and not pay them out their whole contract kind of thing, right? Because that's how it works. Because otherwise they wouldn't have done it. <sighs> that's, that's fucked up. Okay, C tier. That Terra squad could have only been met if they kept get amazed and got rid of Avala. I don't know. I think that that Terra squad was doomed from the start. Do you live in Toronto? No. No, I live outside of Toronto. I live I live in Waterloo right now because I go to your Waterloo. But I'm from PEI, so not not in Toronto. But a mere hour away. But make that three hours on the 401. Wub too low. 
No, what you saying Wub wasn't the worst DPS in the league? Who's the worst DPS in the league then? Doomed because they didn't have Gona Mazed. Doomed because they're the Paris Eternal and would rather fucking get rid of their entire roster and suck. Malthel? Yeah? But bro benched Wub. They're both really bad, to be honest. Mirror? Mirror has an argument. I guess I guess that's kind of real. Mirror never looked good. Wub at least you could say looked average. Not even average. Wub looked better than four minute Genji Blade. I'm Wub's biggest shooter. Hold on, let me move my mic a little bit. That should be better. I don't know. Dynamic's a pretty big Wub shooter as well. Wub MVP. Wub LVP, bruh. Alright. C tier, finally. Well, not finally, but C tier. This is this is kind of hard because there's a lot of players. So C tier is gonna come down to like like C tier is gonna like go really big, I think. Um, right away. Develop has to be bottom of C tier. Carpe, crappe. <laughs> yeah, crappe is down here. I agree with that. I'm thinking King is down here. I'm thinking, because here's the thing, Carpe Develop didn't play very well at all. He had some moments on Widowmaker, and then other than that, he was very inconsistent and not good. Carpe, hard to judge if he didn't even play. Who? Carpe played. Carpe played uh, a bit in the kickoff clash, most of the time in the summer showdown. And... At the end of the the countdown cup, but my boy, my Kaylee in here. My Kaylee wasn't in the season, right? Yeah, my Kaylee was just not in this season. Carpe, when he did, it was below average. Yeah, hundred percent. You don't need to see him play. <laughs> Put him in C. My Kaylee is not. <laughs> no, I'll do you one better for my Kaylee. I'll, put, I'll give you a my Kaylee and S tier for now. Right, right here. This is my Kaylee tier. Um, yeah, Carpe actually. The thing about Carpe is he looked awful in Summer Showdown, but in the Captain Cup, he actually wasn't that bad on Tracer. Let me be frank. But I think everything put together, it's hard not to put Carpe in C tier. King was not great. I don't know. He looked better than not having... Like, who was there before him? He looked better than Psycho, so he looked good. But Psycho looked awful, so... I put Carpe top of C. Well, we'll see. I'll order it more once we get more people in C. I'll do this for now, though. But C is going to be pretty fucking big, so we'll see what happens. Um... Shax, I want to put in C. Because uh, I just, I know I've been credit. Oh, I should take, I, I don't need this headset on anymore. There we go. I ain't hearing shit. There's nothing to hear anymore. There we go. Fuck that headset. Um, Shax, straight up, on the Tracer, was not impressive. He diffed, like, he got diffed by Malthel one time. I remember that. He did good against Venom one time. But for the most part, I think Shax was a big disappointment. There are far worse than Carpe, top of C, near top of C. Carpe single-handedly sandbagged Philly season. Okay, let's not go too far. He single-handedly sandbagged their summer showdown, but they still made the playoffs. They still did. Or the tournament. So, it wasn't that bad. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. It could just because they didn't scrim Tracer, you, you play Shax just for that. No, but they did. They were playing Tracer. They were playing Tracer Sombra stuff in the Countdown Cup. Like like Shax was like actually their starter in the Countdown Cup towards the end there, and he didn't really impress at all. Like I I, I don't know. And then other than that, I don't rate too harshly like the other little maps he got throughout the middle of the season because like that's kind of hard to ask but whenever he was actually getting scrim time you presume because that's what they were playing in matches 
I would I would have liked to see him step up a little bit. Um, you know who else can go C tier? Whenever Dante played like his two ma- he played off a little bit of DPS in midsummer in midseason madness. So I'll I'll put Dante here, but he realistically could be an unplayed, maybe. Streamer, why is Gurio over anyone? Look, look. The people he is over is Vancouver Titans and Paris Eternal. So like what what more is there really? I think that, that speaks for itself, you know? Gurio at least did something at least one time, surely. I cannot say the same with legit any of these players. I think. Um, Who else is C-tier? I'm putting Fleta in C-tier. Bro was below average. Fleta was, was simply below average. His tracer got better, but uh, for most of the time, it was just legit. He did nothing. He didn't die. He didn't shoot anything. He just was AFK. He was just AFK. Uh, outside of that, the Reaper was all right, I guess. But, like, it's Reaper. His Reaper was all right in the kickoff clash whenever they played it. But other than that, not really anything of note for Fleta. There was one point where we had hope for Gurio. None of the others have that. I guess, yeah. That's that's fair, but in terms of what he actually did, I still think he was better than these players. Even though he was not good. Um, I'm going to put Innovation in this tier. He, he had some weird little Mesa. I guess Innovation's hard because he didn't actually play bad when he came in, but he didn't get a lot of play time. It's kind of hard to rate where Innovation is because he mostly played like the weird shit. Like he played some May. That's probably what it was mostly. I'm actually curious if I go and look at what his hero selection has been, his hero pool. What is uh what was Innovation's hero pool looking like? I'll go to heroes. Team LA Valiant. I don't know what this looks like on stream. Uh you can probably find you can probably see it a little bit. Hold on. Season 2022. Where's innovation? Tracer, one, one hour and 19 minutes on Tracer, one hour and two minutes on May, and 35 minutes on Sombra is what it's looking uh, looking like for uh, for innovation. And the May was good. The Tracer and Sombra were not that great. So I think C tier is fine. Um, Assassin, I would like to put C tier, I believe. He had some moments where he looked pretty good, when her Washington looked pretty good, but then he would just disappear for multiple matches at a time, standard Washington. He was never really the reason for their success. It felt like he just got it whenever they got it kind of thing, you know? I do have hopes for Assassin, but I just feel like he's... And they played him on the Sombra again, man. Assassin on Sombra just makes me really upset. I get really upset when I see Assassin on the Sombra, I won't lie. Um, Finale and Although, I think, can both square up into C tier. Although, performed well in the Summer Showdown Tournament, but outside of that, it was extremely pedestrian, right? He played a little bit of Soldier in Kickoff Clash. It wasn't great. His Genji in the qualifiers of the Summer Showdown was not great. It was average, probably. And his, his Summer Showdown Tournament Genji was probably A tier, maybe low A tier. He leveled up a little bit on LAN. But I think C tier for all those, pretty reasonable. And I think Fleta, or not Fleta, Finale also fits this. His Tracer was decent at the beginning, but it just never... It just never really came together for Finale all the way through. Midseason Madness was not great. Towards the end... His tournament run was, or his playoff run wasn't that great either. Uh, I don't know. I think C tier is pretty reasonable for finale. I think C tier is actually where Shockwave is going too. Shockwave didn't actually play that well when he played that the first little bit of that stage. No, and in stage one, I wasn't actually impressed by by Shockwave very much because Aspire was kind of stealing the show, and Shockwave was just kind of there, and he would be like, 
we lost again, team, and you go to Twitter and you be a little sad guy. Skull emoji X5. But I feel like it was actually pretty underwhelming from him. I don't know if this is a good take or not. But I don't know. He had good moments on Soldier. It was a long time ago, so I might I might be forgetting too, but I, I, I remember not being that impressed. Good moments as in like average moments or good moments as in like actually good moments? Or as in like all right? I don't know. I feel like he's, it's a pretty all right level. Um, who else could be C tier? Victoria. I think Victoria is a good C tier. Cause like straight up, I think Seeker is too. I think both Seeker and Victoria is a good C tier. Fairly good early season. If Titans have an actual tank, they may not have gone 0-12 first half. Maybe. I can see that being the case. But I was also on them because they never fucking just played the Zarya shit, which is what they had to do, and they just chose not to. I don't know what that was from them. Like, just, just incredible, incredibly questionable coaching decisions from Vancouver consistently. I, I'll move Shockwave. I'm willing to move Shockwave up, but I don't think I want to put him average yet. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is a... Uh, well, it's also because, like, we only have one stage to go off of, so it's kind of fucky, regardless. Um, Seeker Victoria. I think Victoria was pretty inconsistent for the most part. Well, he was pretty consistent, I think, but he was consistently, like, there. You know what I mean? Like, whenever I come into a, a, a matchup for Victoria, it's like, I either expect him to win it or lose it, and there's not a lot in between. Like, you kind of know who he's going to win against. You kind of know who he's going to lose against. And most of the time, it was uh, just just a loss. Now, there were there were some matches where they stepped where he stepped up, like, after Stryker left. He stepped up for a match, and, like, there were things here and there. But for the most part, Victoria wasn't that impressive. Um, Seeker, on the other hand, had a really good first, like, match back in reverse sweeping Vancouver and all that. But... Outside of that one match, he was pretty unmemorable. So I think it's fair to put them both here. I had Seeker. I was rating Seeker really highly after that first match, but he never really kept it up. So I'm putting him down here. I'll put Architect here because Architect really didn't play much. Like, he played one week, as I said earlier. And it's like, he, he actually didn't play that bad, but he didn't really play that good either. He got like a 5k. Like it, like, it wasn't like he was playing poorly, just like he wasn't playing like the Alpha U we knew at the time. Like, this was this was when Alpha U was at his peak, and then Architect had to come in, and then it was just like, this team with that Alpha U looks pretty bad. And then they didn't have Alpha U mentally. Is XE C tier? I don't think so. I think that XE coming in and, and looking so good in the mid-season madness. Like, I remember remember mid-season madness, they lose to somebody with Hydron in. They go in against London. They play Hydron two maps. XE comes in and they win the rest. And he actually looks pretty good. I think Hydron's better than XE, but I don't think XE, XE ever looked bad. You know what I mean? So I'm going to put XE like probably B tier. Somewhere around here. Not, not Maybe not that high. But somewhere in B tier, I think. Architect should retire TBH. No flame. No, I will flame Architect. He's awful. I uh, like watching Spark in season four. Like, I, I, it was it was such a bad experience being a Spark fan and and just looking beside Shy and seeing Architect. That bro can play legit Reaper and like. I don't remember what the other character was. It was like Reaper and like Echo or something. Not Echo. Reaper like Soldier he had one time. I don't remember. It was just so sad. And I personally... I, I'm not personally, but Architect should... If I see Architect in the lobby, I, I immediately frown. Like, straight up. Just not... Just 
just a frown, just not happy, just not happy with the current environment of architects in the lobby. Um, anyone else to put in here, or is this like actually? I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Dia in here. This might be a hot take to put in Dia, but here's the thing with Dia. He didn't play Sojourn at all, basically. His hit scan itself was pretty good, but it wasn't anything to write home about. This might be a bad. Well, fuck. It's hard because I love Dia. It's hard. But just being, just sitting out the entire season because you're not playing Sojourn or because Easy Han has a better Sojourn just feels so bad to me. But when he actually played, he did look pretty good on the Ash. And his soldier was decent. I don't know. I'll put, I'll put him C, but he, he has the potential. Dia peaked on tank this season. That's true. That's true. And um, I didn't even put him that high on the tank tier list. I put him fucking C on tank. So if he peaked on tank, and I believe that's true, then he's just C right now. He was still the worst Ash in the East. Yeah, I mean, when your competition is Leave, Shy, Lip, MN3, Fitz. That's just how it is. Maybe he could be better than Jimmy on Ash. Who knows? But yeah, I think DSC tier is a good take. It's getting a stack, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, To end off C tier, anything... Not end off. We got two spots. Well, we got a few spots. Left. We can go down this way too. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Flora maybe, because Flora had some really good pop off moments, but for the most part, it was really inconsistent and just. Still, whenever he popped off, they still needed Yaki to do anything. So I kind of don't know if I rate Flora too highly right now. Like I think he has potential still, but like, the consistency wasn't there. Yeah, it just wasn't there. And it's like once in a blue moon when he and Yaki were able to pull up. That's the only time New York could do anything. I'm thinking Ons, to be honest, he had one exceptional match but went quiet every other game. Hmm. Interesting. I, uh, I think Ons... Maybe you're maybe you're right. He had a really good tournament final in midseason madness. But outside of that, th there was always the question mark of is Ons good enough to actually step up? However, I do think Ons is better than Kilo. So I'm probably gonna pair. I'm probably gonna do this then. And I'm I'm perfectly fine with putting Kilo in C tier. I'm a, I've been a Kilo doubter since day one, literally. I'll, I'll probably order this a bit a bit more after. Glister, honestly, I have a completely different take on Glister. I think Glister legitimately played it very well in the kickoff clash. Like, exceptionally well. I, I like Glister was doing so much for Paris, and then he saw his team around him and said, I have no help here. He had zero help, and then uh and then he left. Glister was an amazing best player he had all year. That's not saying a lot. No, but he was legitimately doing so much. And he just didn't have a team. Statistically, like, I don't like bringing up statistics all the time. But, like, Glister was doing a fucking workload. Like, he was doing... I can't... It's not loading. He was doing so much. And just watching him, I remember being like, somebody helped Glister. And enough is enough. He had enough. I'd throw develop and D to be honest. I love develop hate. I think that's perfectly fine. Honestly, you look at the players you compare him to. Would you rather have develop than any of these players on your team? No. So I I will I fit, I will support this notion. The go ahead is enough for me. I think he did better than Gurio though. Like to me, I'm putting Glister fucking A tier, like legitimately. I wanna I'm gonna go back. Sometime maybe, and I'll look at what Glister did on that team for zero reason on Soldier. My lord, my lord, he was he was doing numbers. I'm putting my Kaylee away, by the way. My Kaylee is, is banished. 
Um, why is there a Z here? Okay, so let me let me order this RQ. I think because looking at this, I don't think anyone else is going in this tier. And if they are, I'll just put them in after. But this looks pretty good for Nazi tier. I think Becky and Easy Han maybe have an argument, but I like I think they both got quite good as the season went on. So to quickly order this C tier, if I can move it properly, Ans Kilo at the top makes sense to me. I think they. I think that makes sense. I like. Sh I think Shockwave. Um. I'll put Flora above Shockwave. Maybe Flora like here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Secret Victoria can go here. Shockwave next, maybe then Dia. Did Innovation play a single map after midseason madness? That's a good question. The answer is probably no. I don't because he wouldn't have played it in Jotes, and he probably didn't play anything in Countdown Cup. If I was to guess, I might be wrong. Can I put Finale and Aldo above Shockwave Dia? Is this legal? I think this is illegal. Um, I think Aldo did better than Finale. Yo, I'm gonna put Aldo here actually. And then finale. I remember him on May and that's it. I looked and he he played May. He played an hour of May, an hour 20 of Tracer, and like 30 minutes of Sombra. Flora had moments of brilliance, just unfortunate. He also had a bunch of moments when he was invisible. Yeah, the, the moment the, the brilliance to invisible ratio is just way too skewed for Flora to put him any higher than this, I think. And even then, he was never enough to carry a match on his own. And Yaki was kind of. But when they came together, it was the only time they did anything. Um, Architect. Architect genuinely played well in his one match. I won't lie. I'll put him up here, but this is like kind of fraudulent because he like played legit two matches. Um, I'm not arguing for him. I'm just saying it's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand. Oh, I understand. Uh, Assassin Innovation, Fleta, Dante, Shax, Carpe, King could go. Where's King going? Is he really the worst on this? Yeah, I guess he is. Something like this is my order, I think. That looks good. That looks decent. It pains me to put Architect this high, though. I'm, I'm going to put him down just out of spite. Just out of spite, he's going down. Fuck it. Boom. I'd take King over Shax. Oh, wait. Let's think about Carpe for a second, too. I think King over Shax might be real. Shax didn't do anything this season. So, Carpe season. season Rundown of Carpe season. Played some kickoff clash. Trolled. Had some absolute troll moments on on Soldier. He would just run it down sometimes. Didn't play a lot mid-season madness. Played for the first two weeks of Junker Queen meta. L was the worst Sojourn in the league. Played at the very end of Countdown Cup when Zest hurt his arm. And he looked actually decent. With this in mind, I'd say Fleta played better. Dante... The problem with Dante is I can't tell whenever he played because there were so many different variables for Houston because it meant Piggy was in, which was already a negative, and it meant you took out Pelican. And he, I only remember him playing like... Let me check, actually. How much did Dante play it, uh, Tracer? Was it just a few maths? Was it just one math? I genuinely don't remember. Okay, Dante played... Dante played Ana? When? What? You guys seen this? It's on your screen, right? When the fuck did Dante play Ana? In 2022. What? Did I miss this? What is that? Oh. Oh, it says JQ. It says JQ. It just has the Ana symbol for some reason. She's here, too. 
Wait, this this fucking thing isn't is super bugged. Ana's here three times. Okay. Let me turn this down to zero percent. What else well, did Dante do? Dante played legit twenty one minutes of Tracer. Okay, he legit played one map. I'm just taking him off the list. He played one map, literally. Okay. Crepper had a decent KC. He wasn't inting at times, but he carried a lot of times. I don't remember the carrying part. I just remember the inting part. I remember him being worse than MN3 and then coming in and losing. Imagine Dallas signed Glister and developed him as their hit scan instead of Gurio. That'd be crazy. They might even have won the league then. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, no, yeah, it would have it been sick. But Edison, Edison was pretty good. We'll get to where we'll, we'll get to my thoughts on Edison in, in, a, in a bit. Early in the season, Carver had a better soldier than MN3. Is that true? I remember thinking the soldiers were pretty much equal. I didn't really have a preference. I guess, I guess I'm kind of fraudulent when I said earlier I thought MN3 was better. I remember it being pretty easy. easy. Evie, even, even, even. Oh my god, I can't speak. MN3 tried Cassidy for some reasons. I thought Carpe did too. I thought that was like a team thing. That might be wrong. That might be fraudulent. Um, but yeah, I think Carpe down here is still fine. Let me put Hacker below Dante, even though they didn't play. APAC plays what they want. Forehead. <laughs> True. Uh, okay, so B tier. To start off B tier, this is I'm, I think I know Becky's going B tier somewhere, probably near the bottom. Because the thing with Becky, I really like Becky, but he straight up just was turbo inting for the first three fourths of the season. I would say not turbo it's like he he played very aggressively, but most of the time it was inty, and then towards the end. The ints became less frequent, and the carries became more uh, reoccurring, you know, more often. And Becky got a lot better. But for the first three quarters of the season, I was just like, Becky, what the fuck are you doing on the Echo? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's fine. He was terrible on Sojourn and got benched most of the time anyway. Yeah. Jimmy is B tier, I think. 100% agree. Jimmy, Jimmy is is like low down here, because he has some really he had some good times on Sojourn, to be honest. But for the most part, it was like very aggressive, very much like still the classic Jimmy shift in for no reason stuff, you know. Um, the so like old Jimmy isn't gone, but he isn't uh, completely erased. He's like he's he's still deep inside. He still shows himself every now and then. Um, Nero, I think, is going somewhere around here. I Nero Nero was suitable. He was good enough for until Speedily was able to come through. Basically, I'm fine with Jimmy B, but higher B, I feel. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard. He he had some good moments. He did. I'll I'll, I'll consider that once I uh, once I move up. Once I get some more guys, I'll put him out here so so I can consider him. Nero did his, just did his job. Yeah, I agree. He he was he was he was rock solid. You know he was he was doing his thing. Where would you put Jinmu? Hmm. I think Jinmu is probably going to end up like low A tier. Jinmu's really hard. His flexibility improved. We saw some more stuff on the Tracer, and he had some really pop-off performances, but for the most part, he was really inconsistent. Like, there would be times where Jinmu would just legit turn into the greatest player to touch the game and just hard carry, and then there were other times where Leave has to do everything. He, he didn't really solve his consistency issues. But there were times where he was legit the best flex DPS of, of the entire weekend. So somewhere around A tier for that fact alone. But I'm hesitant to put him like crazy high or anything. I'll put him back here for now though. The volatility of... The volatility... How the hell? Validity? The validity? 
volatility validity of Genji makes Jimmu feast or fam famine. Jimmu was the best player in the league, but only when he played Fusion. <laughs> That's also real. But there were some Genji players that were able to do it so consistently. I feel like Jinmu had a much more inconsistent Genji than a lot of the other top Genjis. Like Choice A1, even in the East, Choice A1, Zest, extremely consistent. You know? Who are you? Yeah, high highs, low lows. The, high, the, the average makes him, uh, makes him A tier. I feel like that's four matches out of 24. Not bad. Not bad at all, to be honest. Not bad at all. Um, so after Nero, Backbone B. I think Backbone is somewhere higher B, like somewhere around here. Backbone's really hard to rate because his May is definitely A tier. But then I look at his Genji and it's definitely C tier. Like his Genji is like is like king level, like slightly, like literally king level. Um so he is a bit harder to rate. His Somber was pretty decent. His Widowmaker at the end had a bit of a surprise to it, and I was all right too. So I think it averages out to like somewhere mid to high B. Somewhere around there is where I'm thinking for Backbone. He had a great Reaper. That's true too. He had a great Reaper. And he had a Zenyatta, which isn't what this tier list is, but his Zenyatta, if, while we're talking about Backbone... So yeah, I think I think mid high B is good for backbone based on like how good his May was, how how so so his other characters were. Um, going back down to Nero level, we're going to Sam. I think Sam and Nero were pretty similar to me. You could I think Sam played better than Kilo for the most part. I I, I don't know. I like Sam a lot. I like Sam a, a lot more than most people. I think so. I know a lot of people have Sam like like down here and stuff like that. So I don't know, but. I think he's similar to Nero. He does his job. And, and that, that's good enough. That's all you ask for. Sam did more with less in regards to Kilo, not going to lie. I think Sam was better than Kilo for sure. Like this entire season, I thought Sam just played beside proper better. Even whenever he touched the Sojourn, it wasn't bad. There's a little bit of that. His Hanzo was pretty solid. I don't know. I, I think Sam was good. I mean, he was super dripped out whenever he came in for interviews, which is just sick. Uh, I actually want to put... Ooh, where do I want to put Striker? Maybe a hot take, but I'd put Fitz B tier. That's not a hot take for me, because I completely agree with that. Uh, before I talk about Striker, I can do Fitz. I think Fitz is legit, like, dead center. Like, like you know, right there. He was super consistent, but he was he didn't have very many pop off moments, and which is kind of an issue with Sojourn. I won't lie. For a lot of the time on hit scan, it's been like, oh, the consistency is key. You don't need to pop off if you get a pick every now and then. You do your solid damage. You hit your Ash Dynamites. You do all that stuff. It's good enough. But when it came to Sojourn, that's not good enough. She was just so dominant. You needed your pop off performances. You needed your Sojourn to just be able to kill five. Sometimes you just need it. Um, and Fitz isn't that kind of player, right? So it just like he I still think he's a really good player, but in terms of this season, what he was asked to do, he didn't he didn't do it in terms of like the meta to me. Um stats wise before playoffs, I think Sam had the best Sojourn on shock. Probably. I believe that. He was the worst Sojourn in IMO in the East. Um, him or Easy Han? I think Easy Han is better. I think they're both really close though, but I think Easy Han is ha did turn out to be better in the end. So, yeah, I think that's a solid take. But I still think it was mid. It's not like like hit scans in the East are just so fucking good. So, being the worst hit scan is still an average player in the league. Um, now, what was I going to do now? I can do Easy Han next because we just talked about him. I think Easy Han is literally like right here. Because Easy Han had some moments where he would just diff leave. Where he would just pull up. He got a lot better as the season went on because Valiant got better. Um, Becky got better, which helped him because he didn't have an inter on beside him as much. So I think Easy Han is in fits are like probably, I, it's probably not that high. Somewhere around here maybe. But yeah, I think they're both pretty good. But they're they're... I don't know. They're both they're pretty similar. Easy Han 
yeah, they're, they're, they're decently similar, but I think Easy Home is better. Um, now I want to talk about Striker. Where the hell am I putting Striker? This is fucking hard. Because his Reaper in the playoffs, I don't think it was, like, super good. I think it was all right. I don't think it was perfect. You combine both teams or just playoff striker? Also Boston striker, too. Also Boston. I just can't do, like, a half-and-half half one. But on Boston, he was just, like, non-existent. Yeah, I'll, I'll count Boston striker. Just because, just for consistency, may as well. I count uh, creative and on, on Houston and Seoul, so makes sense for striker, too. Um... I'll put him in. I don't think I'll put him like somewhere B tier, to be honest. I don't know. He didn't play a lot of matches on Boston. He played like four, maybe. I think four is about right. And like on shock on his tracer before. Uh, like, in Countdown Cup, it was, like, okay. It was, like, decent enough. His Sombra. I'm just going to put him here. I think this is fine. Unless anyone was, like, super impressed by his Reaper, I don't I don't really want to put him much higher. I don't know. Striker was horrible with Boston. The only player he played in an elite level this season is Reaper during the playoffs. I don't even think the Reaper was elite. Was that really elite? Is that what an elite Reaper looks like? I think it was good. I think it was good enough for a team like Shock. But like, hold on. But yeah, even if Somber was not great during CC, yeah, I think that's okay. I, I like B tier around here. It just feels weird because, you know, he did come second. He's like the runner up. Um, What's next? Checkmate? Somewhere around here, I think. He's pretty inconsistent. He had some nice highs, but for the most part, his he was... I don't know. I felt like sometimes he just disappeared. This could be a, this could be an interesting take. There's, there's like a lot of opinions on Checkmate, I think. Reaper was solid outside of some of his alts. I think his positioning was consistently worse than Sparkles, though, like in that grand final. Nah, that's Checkmate Slander. Pineapple and Venom and B, they only play one hero. We're not top three on that hero. Um, I'll do them next. We'll see. Because Checkmate... Okay, Checkmate looked really good sometimes on the Genji. On the Tracer. But other times he just, like, disappeared, man. I swear, he just was not there fully. And that, and that kind of comes with Florida. As these things went on... Checkmate was elite in the Atlanta match, though. Sure, but like outside of that, and even then, that that was just kind of a team diff, yeah. Was there any moments where it wasn't a team diff and Checkmate was pounding? Checkmate was much more consistent than Jinmu. Okay, but that's like that. That's not a high bar though. His Genji carried in plans. That's true. He, he was pretty good in plans. He was pretty. Checkmate was always good at the end of metas, when the team was good at the end of metas. So I guess that matters more. I guess that does matter more. If you think about it. Jinmu Genji is better than Checkmate Genji, 100%. Checkmate was the best player after someone on Mayhem IMO. I think 100% it's Hydron for me. 100% it's Hydron, in my opinion. Bro was so consistent and so good. The the three times Chengdu bit Philly, Jinmu, Jinmu I played Zest on Genji. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Jinmu, Jinmu had some high low, highs and he had some nice lows. Jinmu's definitely going A tier. Do not get it twisted. I'll put Jimmy back in. Jinmu is definitely somewhere in A tier. I don't know where. Probably lower. Um... I don't know. I, I'll put, I'm willing to put Checkmate like upper B, but I'm not putting him in A tier, I think. 
Most of the time, Jemu lost. Most of the time, Chengdu lost. Jemu was completely quiet. Yeah, I think consistency kind of plagued the team. How is Valentine not in B? Um, he is now. Valentine is definitely B tier. Probably like below these guys. I think he did better than Striker, maybe. Eh, it's hard to tell. I'll put him here. Yeah, he he was pretty. He had some. He was Boston. Fucking Boston. Who fucking knows with Boston, man? The only players I feel good about on Boston are like Crimson Punk. Um, let me go back and look at Venom and Pineapple though. They are both B. I 100% agree that I think they're both B. I think Venom is like the top of B because his tracer was fucking nuts. Uh. Like, his Tracer was super consistent, and it just carried sometimes. I could honestly put Venom at the bottom of B. Uh, a. It's either top of B, bottom of A for Venom. Depends on how much you want to knock his consistency. Venom S tier, but only one hero. So, do we knock that to make... I, I think that's true. So, do we knock that down two tiers, or just one? Venom Tracer is an S. I think it's pretty fucking good. I think he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, a Prophet. I 100% think you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, Prophet or someone like that, right? He just, like, carried maps, like, straight up. Ilios was his fucking domain. Venom and A seem solid. Yeah, I think I think Venom low A, low A is good. I'm not going to put him too much higher. But his Tracer was so good. And he was put in a position where he only needed to... Like, he wasn't being forced on the other characters. He's a specialist player. So his value to a team has to be used correctly, right? But if he's on, in a position where he can be utilized properly, he is definitely an A-tier player to me. Is Speedily B? Yeah. I think Speedily is B. Hot take, but I would put Speedily B. And during CC, his duo with Speedily and Tracer Echo was great and carried a lot of maps. Yeah, I, I speedily speedily was very solid, but he was not dominating ever. If you're a tier, there were at least times, maybe not all the time, but there were times where you would just take a map over. Basically, is what a tier is, which is why maybe you could, which is why maybe Glister and A feels a little fraudulent. But bear with me on that one. Um, but speedily never dominated a map. I don't remember. Yeah, Glister A. I think Glister's A. But yeah. I'll talk about him. His team went so six. I can't. Maybe too hyped. Speedily, yeah. Speedily, I think he'll be really good next season. Next season, I'm fully expecting an A-tier performance. And if we don't get that, then he's a disappointment. Um, but yeah, B tier for Speedily. For Glister, I can I can talk about Glister. I think he was fucking insane on Paris, and as the rest of his team was complete ass, and he could not comprehend with it. He couldn't cope. Speedily will be on your team, yeah, and I will be cheering for Speedily. And if he doesn't perform well, I will fucking flame Speedily because fuck it, he'll he'll go right where I have Aldo and Finale parked. Um, Yaki could be B. I think he was great at times, but tried so. Too much, but tried so much to carry his team that he fed a lot. Um, I think Yaki is B. I, I agree with that. It's hard because there were times where he would dominate maps. So that that would, with my reason, reasoning, that would qualify him for A tier. But the, I don't. I don't even think it was like he tried too hard to carry. I think that was like NYXL's entire game plan was just. Yaki, go kill. And he's not that level. He's not proper level that he's allowed to do that. So I think for Yaki, I like him. Mm, I like him upper mid B. I think he needs to not be the best player on his team to do well. I think he, I think Yaki's that kind of player, if that makes sense. If, if Yaki is not his best DPS player on your team, you're in good shape. But if he is your best DPS, it's it's a bit it's a bit rough. 
Um, Doha is not higher than B as well. Yeah. I mean, Doha played really well when he was in. Well, I think I think it's true, though. Doha played well, but he didn't play exceptionally. In 2020, Yaki was the best DPS on his team, and he was an MVP can. Okay. Okay, yes. Maybe you're right. Maybe maybe he can be maybe he can afford to be not the best DPS, but his team needs to at least to be pretty good damn good, I think. His team needs to be good at least. And also 20, 2020 was a long time ago now. The level is the level of play is as it has leveled up, right? I'll get to MN3 in a minute. Hold on. Let me put let me let me stuff Doha into into jail. Let me let me put Doha right here. Um Okay, MN3. Let me hear you out on this one, because I don't know if I am agreeing with MN3 and B. MN3B, he's inconsistent, but has S high, so it's middle. He had games where he got outsniped by Dia and Jimmy. Where he outsniped Lip. Hmm... I think MN3 was inconsistent, but I think that his inconsistencies wasn't, like, really bad. I think MN3 is, like, he was literally the best. He had the best performance in the league on Ash. He had, like, the best hit scan performance in the entire season on, on, one, on, on matches. And then he also had times where he was fucking boom. So I, I think he's probably A for me, though. Somewhere, he's like Jinmu, but on hit scan. I think MN3 is A tier. Just be, I mean, I just value how, how fucking good he was. A lot. So somewhere somewhere around here. Um, Where am I going back? Looking at the other DPS and B tier, Yaki, deaf above the others with a much worse team around him. Um... I mean, I'm looking at Checkmate, and I'm like, did Yaki really perform better than check than Checkmate consistently? I don't know if it's true that he is not in the same caliber of, as as all of these guys, like Speedily, Xe. I think I think this is kind of reasonable for Yaki, like looking at the people around him, right? Aspire in A, leave in B. I think Aspire will be an A, yeah. Leave, I think. I think Leave is low A, high B, maybe. I'm gonna put him down here for now. Cause he he really was pretty still he was still pretty good on the Sojourn. His Sojourn was still sick nasty. He wasn't MVP level, so he definitely took a step back. But it was still like I thought it was really good, and sometimes it was like the only thing Chengdu was do was like that was alive. He was the only consistent part of China, of uh, of Chengdu. Pineapple is the last BIML. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to talk about pineapple. Pineapple definitely came clutch at the play-ins, and that's it. All right, that's all there is to say. He came clutch in the play-ins for Spark. So I'm thinking like I'll put him. Somewhere a little lower. I'll put him like here. Well, he had a fucking insane performance in the plan, so. Well, it wasn't it wasn't turbo insane. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll slot him in right here. Remember when he diffed Shy and Sojourn in the summer showdown on Leave? Yeah. I mean Leave genuinely Leave was really good. He just wasn't as good as normal. And Apple clears proper. Oh, for sure. No doubt. There is that weird game five sub that worked for some reason. What do you mean? I forget that. Like, I remember Pineapple getting subbed out in the playoffs and it worked because um, Alpha E just has a better Reaper. Leave diffed MN3 multiple times. Leave normal was being the MVP of Owl. Yeah, yeah exactly. Playoffs with Alpha E? Yeah, because I don't know why they tried Pineapple there. It just, I, I don't get it. 
Leave on Spark will be insane if fucking if Overwatch can still be played in China, yeah. If they get their new uh I whatever the word is, I forget it. Um Yo, I think there's another B here though. I think there's one last B, and then the rest will go higher. And I think I'm gonna put fucking Alpha E in B. This motherfucker disappeared. This motherfucker blew up in the back half. He wasn't a th he wasn't real. He just wasn't real. He's a fake player. He was insane, and then he was fucking gone, invisible. And then in the playoffs, he brought it back, right? Remember the Alpha E versus Zest debates in KC and MM? I do. And then I remember Alpha E being legit awful. Like, Alpha E was legit below average by the end. So I think he, I think considering everything, he's still better than Pineapple. He still had a better season. But I'm going to put him right here. I'll give Yaki the benefit of the doubt. I'll give Yaki, a, I'll put Yaki there, because he at least was good at all points in this season. He was bad at all points this season. So, fuck it. Alpha, yeah, Alpha E was so good at the beginning. It's so real. Preseason, everyone thought he'd be S, and the rest of the year happened. Alpha E was in the Rookie of the Year conversation the first half of the year. Yeah. Where did you rate Alpha E in Kickoff Clash and, and Midseason Madness? Um, my Midseason Madness DPS, I had Alpha E at the top of A tier. I had him above Zest. I had him, like, look at this guy. Fucking, and look, this is his kickoff clash. I had him fucking topped off right there. He was big chilling. But, um, I'm upset. I I'm just disappointed. Hopefully, if this happens with the leave next season on the Spark, the Spark are a cursed franchise, and they're not allowed to have good, too good DPS. It's impossible. Only one at any time. Okay, before I do A tier, let me let me quickly rate B. Like just just a, just a speed run, probably just a speed run rating. These these this will be your B tier players. Alpha, you gonna go where he posted an LFT? Probably go to contenders. I don't know. No, he'll he'll get picked up by someone. Assuming, um, players still want to do things. Uh, speedily, I think. Do I actually rate Alpha Pineapple down here? Can I put Can I put them? Higher? Can I put them higher? I think I can put them higher. No, checkmate's better. Checkmate did better. X is too high. I'll put checkmate next. I'll put backbone. Then I'll put X E Alpha E. Something like this. Alpha E better than backbone. They're they're kind of similar in some ways. I'll do this just so it doesn't look like I'm grouping all the Spark players together. Boom. They got a sandwich. Pink sandwich with Backbone. I feel like XE goes down a bit. His Widow was his only bright spot. I think his Sojourn was good too. It's just that fucking... It, it's just that... Uh, uh, Hydron's better, simply. Hey, that's the Spark Scullers, LOL. That's real. Backbone was mainly on May. Backbone, his May was good. His Reaper in the playoffs was good. His Sombra was okay. His Tracer, or not, well, he didn't really play Tracer, but his Genji and his Echo were not good. That's my thoughts on Backbone. It's hard to compare when Backbone and Alfie one really plays May and the other Genji. Yeah, exactly. It's hard with Backbone. But I think they're pretty similar, and I'll just do that. Um... As for the rest of this, I think this looks somewhat okay. I like Doha kind of high because I think he did perform well. Sam. I know someone said something about Sam earlier, right? Sam better than... I forget who it was. Doha or something? I don't remember. I don't know. Sam fits better than Easy Han? I don't know if that's even true, though. I think Easy Han was definitely better by the end of the season. I think Fitz was better at the beginning. So it's like how do you wanna how do you wanna slice that one? Fitz also hmm, Fitz did win a title. Fitz diffed Hydron and playoffs cap. I don't know. 
Fitz does have more success, technically. Fitz was my MVP nominee during the first... His soldier was very good. That's where I will give Fitz. His soldier was very good. Fine. I'll do, I can do this. But by the end, Easy Home was better. On the record. Easy Home was better by the end. But they're so close that I don't, I don't... I'm not too pressed about who goes above who. Um... I think I'll keep it like this, though. I think that looks okay. Striker, Valentine. Honestly, fuck Striker. Fuck Valentine. I'm switching these two around. Fuck this. I'm, nah. Mm, yeah. Nah. Okay. Striker here. Final offer. I was going to put him above Nero, but final offer. This is this looks decent. Fitz went even with proper in playoffs. Striker, the playoff Reaper specialist. I don't know. Fitz is like... He was, he's consistent. He's consistent. At the end of the day, he's consistent. He's nothing if not consistent, right? That's him. So, yeah. And, he, and then Striker again, his play, I wasn't too impressed by his Reaper, to be honest. It was okay. It was good. It was decent. It wasn't, it wasn't fucking crazy. Fitz peaks were S tier last year. Yeah, and his peaks were, and his peaks and his troughs were not that deep. Like, he was pretty much an S tier player. Fitz was very good. It's just that, I just think Sojourn and what Sojourn's asked of him isn't, it's just not enough. Like, he just isn't a Sojourn player. He can play the character, but when it comes to being a top team, you need your Sojourn to kill five sometimes, and he doesn't do it, basically, right? And Flutter was top five DPS last year. Yeah, look at him now. Fuck. Carpe was good last season. Shockwave was good last season. Things happen. Okay, so now we get to the point where I kind of want to put an SS tier so that um so that S tier doesn't get too cluttered. And that's where and that way I can have to put proper somewhere. Something like that. Um so then we have AS and SS. S SS tier, tier is like what? Two or three players? Yeah. Two, two or three players. Something like that. Just to make it a little more like, you know, cleaner. Maybe maybe four players. Maybe four players. How is Happy not on list yet? He was mid on Glads. Okay. We can talk about Happy. I think on Washington, he was definitely the best and most consistent player. Um, hmm. The best player on Glads during playoffs. You know what? That might not be bad. I think Happy was not as good as he should have been on Gladiators, 100%. But I, I don't know. I felt like I expected more from him on the Gladiators. I thought when the team around him got better, he would get better too, and it didn't really happen. But I don't think he got worse. I don't think he got worse. You know what I mean? I don't think Happy's bad. I think Happy. I think Happy was more consistent and better than all of these players in B. I like Happy A. I like Happy A for sure. Kevster is more consistent on and better since Happy joined the roster. Is that true though? Is that true? We think about it in the jo the Jotes meta. Kevster was not at his best. It is, it is like Kevster was still very good. Fuck, do not get me, do not get it twisted. Kevster was still a top five DPS player in the league, but his 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 season, his stage three was worse than his stage two and his stage one, right? And then you get Countdown Cup, which was good for for Kevster and Happy. They were just chilling. They were just. You know, Gladiators had a pretty easy schedule, to be fair. And they were just kind of gliding along. And then in playoffs, Kevster was a little bit out of his element on Reaper or Sojourn. They tried to force him on the Soj. It didn't work. Happy it was better in the playoffs. Right? They had a map 5 versus NYXL and CC. That's true, too. Like, Glads were not actually that good of a team in CC. Just that their schedule was so fucking easy. It just kind of worked out for them. But they weren't that good. And that was largely because space was sick, right? But um, 
Yeah. So yeah, I'm leaving Happy in A tier. Now, is he down here? Is he up a little higher? He's probably above most of these guys. He's probably around here. He's probably... Oh, shit. Did I kill someone? No, I didn't. He's probably somewhere around here. I don't know. I'll figure it out a bit. Somewhere, somewhere yonder. But yeah. Um... Kevser got cucked by Jotes. No, but he still he was still playing Genji. He shouldn't have been cucked by Jotes. He like that that's like on him. Reiner was the issue. Um Summer Showdown stats check. For who? For Kev or for, for Happy? Reiner was an issue, but the backline was also not what it should have been, considering the backline was skewed in Funny Astro. 100 percent I agree. Funny Astro struggled and he shouldn't have. Did you do support yet? No, I'll do support sometime this week. The whole Glads team looked worse in the back half while Happy had similar performances in Glads as he did in Washington. Yeah, that's true. And we were rating Happy extremely high on Washington. So. Um, the best Brig and the best Lucio on the same team should have been insane in a Brig Lucio meta, and it wasn't. Yeah. Kevster? Yeah, we can do we can do a stats check on Kevster in, in the in the in the thingy or queue. Sure. If it loads, which it might not. Let me uh make it like is this bigger? Oh, that's the wrong. This is the fucking chat stream. Hold on. Boom. Here's the whole thing. Um Stalker and who are you in A are A tier? Well we could uh we could I could consider who are you to be S tier, maybe. I could I could maybe be considering who are you to be S tier. It's hard to say. He's somewhere. Stalker's definitely A tier somewhere though as well. What am I doing? What am I looking at? Uh, I'm looking at Kevster. Where the fuck is the stage none? What is happening? 2022. Um, summer Showdown qualifiers. Both Glad DPS would be rated higher if Funny Astro saved beat. <laughs> Oh, hell no. Nah. Okay. Um. So where is Kevster? Kevster, let me look at Genji's. And then we'll get back to the tier list. This is, this is interesting, so I'm down to do this. Control F, Kev. Well, we'll look at the solo kills. Deaths. Okay, so for Kevster, these are like this top three damage. This is pretty high. Final blows for 10. That's pretty fucking good. But for Kevster's normal, let's see, 9.4, 8.9. And then we look at the rest of the season. Does it go down? It does go down. Nine point, but not by a lot. Eight point, it, his DPS was more. I don't know. The stats are fucking hard because this is a it was a weird meta, so it's hard to compare to anything else. I will be honest. Whoops. But yeah, um, where am I looking? Red sheet. Boom. Oh shit, I should not be. Okay, let me look. Um, okay. He's below Alfie in final blows, impressed for Alfie who went one and three. That's true. Wub really dominating the ten. For 10. <laughs> Man, Wub was Wub had a really unlucky season, man. Wub had an unlucky season. Okay. Kevster is bottom SIMO. Yeah, Kevster, we'll get to Kevster. Kevster, wait, bottom well, he might be SS. He could be SS. We'll see what we get to Kevster, but he's definitely S tier at the very minimum. Um, who was I gonna talk about next? Stalker? Yeah, we can do Stalker. Um, I think Stalker was really good on the Genji in the uh in Junker Queen meta, right? Oh my god, stop fucking hitting my desk. Holy shit. Okay. But outside of that, his midseason madness on the Soj wasn't... I, I I wasn't too... I didn't rate it too highly. I rated it probably mid. Was it really good? I don't think it was really good. I think it was solid. I don't think it was, like, fucking insane. I didn't think it was much better than Fitz. Stalker, Sojourn, Dift, Kai... Okay. Sure. 
Mm, sure. Okay, that's valid. But uh, I'm still not putting him higher than A. Like he can go A. He's going like above Glister. I'll put Glister down here for now. Glister will go bottom of A just because I I I don't know. He's there. He had a gamer got diffed by the best, so joins shy. That's no uh, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't really? Who wouldn't? So. But yeah, I'll put Stalker like here. He was fantastic. Stalker above Aspire. Mm. Kai is not higher than AIMO. He had some of the best performances on Hitscan this season, but was so inconsistent it was tragic. I agree. I don't think Kai's above A. I think Kai's somewhere in, in here. Kai should probably be in A tier. Didn't really have a great season second half. Yeah, I agree. He didn't really have a good soldier. He had a good one stage. Let's not get it twisted. Kai had a good one stage. His soldier wasn't good. His soldier wasn't good. His sojourn in midseason madness was good. And after that, it wasn't good. Kai, was, I don't agree that Kai was S tier in soldier meta. I just don't agree. I think it was. I just, I just don't think he was. To be honest with you, Docker definitely above Jinmu. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm choosing to rate mostly his Genji play because his Sojourn was good, but it wasn't... His Sojourn was, was B tier or low A to me. To, on a, and... But he didn't play it that much. Looking at what he actually did and what he had the most impact on, it was definitely the Genji. So I think he had a better Genji than Jinmu consistently in that stage too. So yeah, I think that's fair. Stalker better Genji when he played it, even though I don't want to say Jinmu is as good. But Stalker lows are better. Yeah. Jimmu had a better peak on Genji, probably. But yeah. Aspire better than Kai? 100%. Kai is not staying up here. Kai is like... I think I'm going to put Leaf above Jimmu, actually. I think Leaf is more consistently the better player on that team. Venom's going to be low. Kai's going to be kind of low. Happy Stalker. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll order it. I'll order it in the end. I'll order it in the end. Um, But for now... Gotta go. Have a good night. I'll watch the VOD. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks for thanks for pulling up. Kai had one stage where he was S tier. He took out APAC. Yeah, pretty much. I, I'm in full agreement. I got super overhyped in his in his one stage. And he wasn't overhyped. He was fucking good. He was insane. He he definitely was one of the best initial users of Sojourn. But uh the rest of the season. I wouldn't be too happy about it if I'm him. Um, who else is going A tier? Let me put a let me give a, a decay shout. I think decay's A tier, probably. Okay, we want to get into a decay talk. Want it we want to talk about decay for a second? Here's the thing with decay. When he wanted to, he fucking killed everyone. Everybody. Completely. But he just didn't do that all the time. And Washington was so dysfunctional that even though he always had insane mechanical performances, they weren't able to string together wins. I'm... I don't know. Everyone in this chat wants to put the K in S, but it's hard to justify. I don't know if everyone wants to put the K in S. I feel like a lot of people are Decay haters. I feel like people either think Decay is a fucking god, or they think he is not. And they're just sick and tired. I think there, there are very much two camps of Decay. See, look, bottom of S, high A. And if Frags was in the chat, he'd want me to put Decay over here. But, um... I think bottom of S when he's on, high A. I, I think I definitely want to put him below Happy. I think it's true. Decay wasn't the best DPS on his team when Happy was there. I think that's true. I think Happy was consistently better than Decay. But Decay did have higher highs. Mid A. Decay was the only reason Watson got wins sometimes. That's true. Do I say one A? A, don't disrespect the goat right now. You know damn well where I'm putting choice A one, and it's not A tier. Choice A one's the fucking goat. 
Disrespectful. That's true, though. Uh, That's a nuclear take, but still a good one. Happy more consistent. Okay, so I think what I'm feeling is decay. Is it criminal to put decay above Jinmu but below leave? Is this a criminal take? Am I going to prison? Choi had great games, but he choked in play-ins. No, that's good. Okay. I don't, Okay. The play-ins issue was that fucking Chengdu showed up on the Winston comp. And it's all, it was already known that Charge were pretty much Zarya players, especially. I feel like Chengdu had a good matchup. It was really fucking close. I don't know if Choi Se Wan choked. I don't know if I don't think he particularly played bad. I think Chengdu just showed up when it mattered, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is just I could just be off my rocker, which I probably am. But if there's a one one hill to die on, it might be that one. But we'll see. We'll see. Choi around Aspire. Um. Uh. I don't know. I think Aspire was. That's hard. It's fucking hard. I think Choi between Leave and Happy. I think Choi was definitely better than Stalker. Well, definitely better is a harsh, a harsh way to say it, because he he didn't. He did nothing. For, he did not. He didn't do nothing. But he doesn't have the accolades, or he doesn't have the high level performances. But I don't know. Choi is definitely better than Happy. This I don't know. I'll get to whenever I'm putting Choi in S to start somewhere around here, and and uh, we can uh, we can have a bit more of discussion once I get to this because I I don't know. I I might be fucking. This is my this is my this is my hill. This is my personal hill. Trust wants my favorite player that's not on Spark or Toronto ever, to be honest. He legit had no help. And he's just so fucking good. I don't know. I'll talk. We'll get there. We'll get there. We have some more guys here, though. For example, um, Potiphon. What are Potiphon had an interesting season. I'll put Trust one back over here for now, actually. I, I, I don't want to confuse anything. Potiphon. No individual. Hero was particularly insane for Paddy in the first two stages. And he was off the last soldier for his first qualifiers. He picked it up in the playoffs. In the actual, in the midseason madness, his main key was his flexibility, which let him play Tracer, let him play um, Genji, his Sojourn, but none of those were particularly insane. His soldier was really good, but not in the, the beginning. He turned it on in the playoffs, right? In the beginning, he his flanks were very off. He wasn't really... His timing, it was just his timing was off for the entire kickoff clash qualifiers, basically. Potiphon is the glister of S tier. What does that mean? I remember he played Genji in the first week and it was tragic. He held on to Visor forever. Glad's never won anything after he got injured. True. I think Potiphon, I don't know. I'm just I just have the raw, I just have the, the idea in my head that Potty made the team better by existing. Which might be wrong, probably isn't, but who knows? He won that MM Spark game purely off his blade. Yeah, that was a, that was one of the best. That was a really good performance from Potty. Fucking insane match. One of my favorite of the entire season. That one was insane. And it's still hard. They still would have lost with Potiphon, probably. Well, who knows? Who knows? Because th that first week, they wouldn't have been doing sh sh Shujorn shit like that. They wouldn't have had to scramble to get happy. They'd have a Sojourn that knew that was already with the team. And they had a lot of close matches against good teams. If they get even one more win, there was a chance they made playoffs or they, they made the tournament. And there's a chance they win the tournament, like straight up. 
Potiphon could have been the difference in them winning and losing in jokes. Straight up. No, no, no. But but like you say that, you say that, that um that Rhino Junker Queen would have held them back. But fucking look. Glad's lost the first two weeks in five mappers. Like, if they win one of those, they are literally in. They're just in. Straight up. They just had to win one of them. If Potiphon's there, do they win them? I'm not saying they do, but I'm saying there's a better chance. Uh, it's not It's not inconceivable to think that if Pouty was there, they would have won three stages. That's all I'm saying. I don't think they would have won playoffs. I don't think, but straight up. Straight up. Shit, shit would have been different, maybe. Um... Yeah. You hold 4 0 shock and went to map five versus on since you Uh look, they got better as it went on. I'm sure. Glad uh, uh, Dallas weren't weren't super uh, dominant at the beginning. Dallas get better. Every team gets better. That, that's a Mickey Mess way to say it, but yeah. Dallas are crazy. Anyway, where am I putting Potiphon in the end? Do I want to put him above happy? Do I want to put him above leave? Do I want to put him up? Where do I want to put him? I want to put him here. Every team gets better but Paris. True. I don't think Vancouver got better in Jotes. I think they got pretty stagnant. I thought they started off strong and they never really built on it. It's another team. Paris actually gets worse. They won their one game with the old roster. Vancouver did. I don't think they really did though. I I don't know. To me, like in this in this one, I f I feel like they didn't really improve that much. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I wasn't that impressed as as they went on. I was just like, eh. they're doing their thing. They were really good at disengaging. They, they they were pretty good in that meta, but they weren't like, no. They stagnated after Summer Showdown. Oh, I mean like in metas, not throughout the entire season. I mean like within stages, to clarify there. They beat Toronto and CC. Yeah, they did. And then they didn't. And then Toronto got better than them. And then Toronto came third. Or no, not in CC. That was not the Summer Showdown. Ignore that. But yeah, they did. Fucking Toronto. Fuck Toronto. They, they're, they don't know what's going on. Um, what else am I doing here? Is there anyone else that needs to pull up? Hydron needs to pull up to A tier. Now, can we have the great debate between a Hydron and Aspire for the best NA hitscan or the best NA Sojourn? The great debate. Choose your arguments. Or not, not, and not, um. Oh, you guys are probably just naming more people to go here. Both of those are maybe correct. Edison's definitely here. But first up, between Hydron and Aspire. Aspire had less around him. And performed more pop-off, but Hydron was more consistent. So what I am leaning towards Aspire right now. Edison overrated because of his playoff performance. He was C-tier before for the first half of the season. No, he wasn't. Okay, straight up. Do not forget that his Reaper was fucking good in Kickoff Clash. His Reaper was good. It was it was quite good. Okay? What did I rate him? What did I rate him in, in Kickoff Clash? I rated him A tier off of his Reaper. This was Reaper only. His his Reaper was good in the kickoff clash. We should not get it twisted. Where did you rate him MM? Quite badly, I would I would argue. Quite badly. I, I am not I'm I'm agreeing that Edison's overhyped, but I don't wanna I don't wanna get it twisted. I rated him D tier.
I said, bro sucks. And that's true. Bro went from zero to 100. You had Dove above him. <laughs> yeah. If Buell cloned Edison for playoffs, it would have been 4 0. Maybe. Edison's Reaper is probably better than um than, than Sparkles. Okay, my list is quite literally not even close to similar, really, in any regard. This is abhorrent. <laughs> I think Edison's Sojourn is probably a step below almost everyone else in A tier. Except, like, I, I don't know. Everyone in the entire league can play Reaper, but Edison did it the best, maybe, in the kickoff clash. And also, um,. I was going to say someone couldn't play Reaper. Who the fuck was it? There was one... I don't know. I hate the fuel, but that is criminal. What, Edison in D tier for Midseason Madness? Or Edison at low A tier right now? Blood of Reaper was good on push. True. Um, I don't know. I, I just think... I mean, it's like his Reaper was good. DMM? I don't know if it was criminal. I don't know. I forget what exactly happened. I forget what he played in the MM, but that's where I had him. I don't know why. Edison is high A or S tier argument is solely if you turn your brain off and only remember playoffs. Even then, in the playoffs, secretly, I don't think he was, like, that good. Like, not that not, not he was bad, but he wasn't S tier in the playoffs for me, to be honest with you. Edison played like two games in midseason madness. Yeah, I, I cannot. I don't know what happened in my midseason madness rankings. I'd have to go back in time and watch it. I don't. I don't remember why. What my argument was there, but the present is now. Proper was better than him that whole series. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Edison will go. I'll put him down here for now. He'll go somewhere. He, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You're right with Edison in playoffs. Real. I agree. Um, you want to talk about another A tier player? Let's talk about Pelican. Let's bring Pelican out. I'm not putting Pelican in S tier. Straight up. I'm not doing it. I think he, I, I'm just not doing it. I feel like bro was not, did not show up when he needed to. Like, am I crazy for this? Bro have Edison above Alpha Yi. Bro, Alpha Yi was not a player for the back half of the season. Alpha Yi was legitimately AFK for fucking 10 weeks. Nah. KC was Pelican's best stage? Maybe. His most iconic moment was that Hanzo clip on Coliseo against Toronto. So that, that kind of puts the season in perspective, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Remember his clutch against the fine. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about right there. So to me, Pelican is definitely, he was more consistent than every, that he was consistently good, but he was never great as prophesized. I think Pelican was the best Reaper in the playoffs. Mm. Maybe Pelican's Reaper was pretty good. I will be honest. Strong Echo too. Yeah, and the problem with that was Echo wasn't like super meta. This this ordering is way out of whack, by the way. I'm just like not ordering as I go, pretty much. Pelican third most deadlifts. Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. Pelican below Hydron, you can't play Tracer. True. But just think about like when it mattered, when you needed Pelican to show up in the playoffs. Outside of, not in the playoffs, in tournaments, outside of this playoffs, it didn't happen. And on this one, he was on Reaper. And I did give Edison a lot of praise on Reaper. Um, but it's not quite the same. You know what I mean? 
Uh, Edison's not rated very highly either off of it. He got diffed by top tracers. The worst thing about Pelly is he couldn't play Tracer as a flex DPS. Yeah, exactly. Sojourn was way more important than Reaper. True. The entire composition was built around Sojourn. That's why Winston was played and, and Reaper was played because Winston was played. Straight up. If you follow the chain of command, Reaper is down the little guy at the bottom. He's just there. He's just there to make sure that, that Winston... And there is a skill to Reaper, obviously, but... You want to know who has the fourth most deadlifts? Decay. I believe that one. That one's unbelievable. Without without Decay, Washington aren't nearly as good, especially in that second half, in the in the back half after Happy was gone. It was only Decay. But yeah, I'll order this after because right now it's it's a bit fucky. I won't lie. Pelican ahead of Aspire. I don't agree actually. I think I think Aspire had a better season probably. Like, I can't even, like, tell you above who or not. No, I can order it right now before I add people, maybe. Because I think there's still... I think Hisu is here. Um, I think Sparkle is in here, too. Am I not putting enough people in S tier? Do I have too many people in A and not enough in S? Mm. Maybe. We'll figure it out. Hisu best stage was Jotes, right? 100%. These guys are not going right here, by the way. Sparkle was weird this year. Aspire had the disadvantages of having no humans on his team, and he's still pounded. <laughs> yeah. So I think I want to put Hisu pretty high. Because he literally was the only... because the, Mostly because of his summer showdown. But also, he was pretty fucking consistent throughout the entire thing. Even when Sparkle one summer showdown proper was better, true, but he was still pretty good. And and people say that that Sparkle diffed proper on the Genji, but that's like kind of fraudulent. Because I remember I remember on Reddit there was the big thing of oh Sparkle's the better Genji because he diffed proper, but it's like look at look at like the team around them in the summer showdown. It's like not even comparable how good Dallas were at that meta. Happy B. Mm. I don't think Happy's B. But he's... I don't know where the fuck he is. This is fucked up. Okay, this is probably my A tier for now. I can rank this. I can rank this a little bit. I can rank this a little bit. Hold on. So, immediately, I'll give... I'll, I'll reiterate on my reasoning for Glister. Because this is the weirdest pick, obviously. It's fucking Glister. He legit had no help, and he still looked fucking good on the Soldier and Kickoff Clash. That's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. Straight up. Proper always finding his way into arguments. Smile. Because he's the best. It's easy to compare to the best. I think Glister has to be at the bottom of A simply because he only played one stage on a shit team. He didn't win a single match. No, he did win one, right? He won one match. I think, I don't know, I, I, that I just in principle, he's going at the bottom of A tier, just in principle. He didn't, he didn't, he won zero matches, straight up. They won their game in MM, oh, that's true, that's true, my bad. It was, uh, it was Charge who won a game early and then did nothing for a while until they got the new team. So yeah, Glister's going down here. After Glister, I want to put Edison. Because his Sojourn is good, sure. Why do you have Merit B? What? Nah. Nah. You got to get your eyes checked, brother. Nah. 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 Cut that one out. Cut that one out. That ain't real. That ain't real. That's insane. That's insane. Like, actually insane. Like, no way. So Jorn, his only S tier hero. It's the only fucking hero he played. You, his other tiers are fucking question mark emoji. You don't know his other fucking characters, bruh. His soldier was insane too. His soldier was fucking nuts. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. How, how can you wait his other heroes when he didn't play them? 
His Ash was good too. I don't remember his Ash that much. I'm going to be honest. Who is the last of A? I'm pretty sure this is my A tier. These guys right here. I'm just ordering them now. I'll do, I'll, I'll do a little order. Edison, not that great on the Soge. Good Reaper. His t he benefits from his team giving him really good angles. There's still one more slot? Uh, I don't remember. I don't really do slots. I don't really know. I just kind of have spots. If you put Merit B, where do you put Pelican? <laughs> you moved it? Oh, my bad. Who are you? A, surely he's insane, but only plays Genji. Okay, but his Genji was fucking the best in the league, no? But his Genji was insane. You have choice A1 and S, maybe. Maybe not, not an error. Maybe not an error. Um, Is it bad that I want to put Pelican all the way down here? I want to do this. Actually, I can put Kai here. I can put Kai here. Then I want to put Pelican. I want to put Venom somewhere around here. Pelican A at the top. Interesting. Chat needs to realize specialist players are exactly that. The thing, okay, the way I interpret specialist players is they need a certain environment to, like, thrive in, right? But if your team's able to give you that environment, which is what you want, they're, like, like, you have to play them for what they're fucking meant to play it for, basically. If you had... Let me, let me try it. Let me try If you have Shu, right? And you were to force him on the brig, that's not what he's fucking here for. You know what I mean? It's not his fault if he isn't that great on brig. No lower. Kai better than Edison. Come on. That may be real. I can I can see the argument for Kai below Edison. That 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 that's based. Um, flexibility is only an issue if you advertise yourself as flexible. A flex DPS specialist gets a pass most of the time. Shanghai only looked good with who are you in? Shanghai only dropped three maps in Summer Showdown. This too, yeah. I don't know, cause like obviously flexibility makes you a good player and makes you a high value player. What was I saying? Flexibility makes you a high value player to pick up. But like there's still value in picking up another player. Venom had Venom was carrying matches on Tracer. Was he in all the time? No. Because he's only a Tracer player. He's just only a Tracer player. But when he's in on Tracer and his Tracer is meant to be played there, he is he's performing well. He's getting his value. So how well was he in this? How good did he play this season? Pretty damn well. You know how much Venom be at best? Mera from all the games I've seen in Contenders and the Bit and Owl isn't a lead on anything other than Sojourn. Sure, but Kilo in Contenders was fucking insane and better than Merit in every regard. But Kilo wasn't that good this season. They're different le layers. They're different levels. Like, Speedly in contenders, fucking insane. The, the season wasn't there. It's you can't. Some players operate better in different circumstances. It's too hard. Kilo was inconsistent in contenders. Yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't. He was consistently not that great. He had some moments. Sure, he had some moments this season. I don't know. They're like different. They're different leagues. Almost. They're different leagues. Straight up. Striker should be a tier just for the playoffs. Just eye test, he ain't it. I don't know. Next season, we'll see. Next season, he might not play nearly as well. But I think he was fucking... I think he was one of the best says joints. For sure. A level behind lip, but, like, still top. Um, I don't think Striker was... Striker on the Reaper was, like, solid enough. But I, don't, I think it was... I think he got diffed by Sparkle... I, I don't know. He was good enough to get the job done. I'm, I wasn't, like, overly impressed by him, to me. I don't know. And then in the Countdown Cup, he was whatever. In Boston, he wasn't very good. 
Nah. Merritt got the mol Merritt got demolished by proper with like three seconds practice. Merritt was also the only player playing in that entire match. Houston was fucking dead as a doornail, bro, in that second match against Shock. Like Merritt was the only thing holding them together. He was the only one playing the game. Everyone else was was flopping around like a dead fish. Straight up. Um. Proper demolished most people. It doesn't say much. I agree. I thought his Reaper was really good, but maybe I'm biased as a Shock fan. He gave them a lot of chances to win, especially in Game 7 against Fuel. I just feel like he was constantly a step behind Sparkle. Like, I think he got outmatched most of the time. Not saying that Sparkle's like, like a significantly better Reaper, but whenever you're in Grand Finals, little shit like that matters. And his time with Mikey, which could be largely because there was a lack of scrim time, right? I'm not saying it's on him. But the timing with Mikey, a lot of the time, it didn't feel as clean as it needs to be if you want to win the entire Overwatch League. You know what I mean? Like, the reality of it is if Edison was on both teams instead of proper, Shock would have gotten 4 would Right? Like, if the Sojourns were even, Shock would have been kind of rolled, I think. Well, maybe that's giving that's not giving them enough credit, I think. Maybe it wouldn't have been a 4 0, but it wouldn't have been a, a game seven. You know what I mean? That's that's what I think. Um anyway, I'll put I can put Pelican above Venom, I think, maybe one time. Maybe I'll do that for the one time. Striker got alts cancelled, hit nothing, died before he could use the etc. His Reaper was overhyped. Valid. Sparkle infinitely more d disciplined on the Reaper. Striker good, but his alt uses at times a general timing. Yeah. Krusty's biggest mistake in his career was leaving Mikey in for all seven maps. I'm a little torn on the Mikey thing with Shock because on one hand, they, they wanted to use that aggression and the aggression clearly worked out better. Like, because I don't know. I think they needed to change their play style up from what Dallas was doing. And Kaluz probably wasn't willing to do that. Because if you go in with, to that game with the same play style as Dallas, you're going to lose. So, it's hard. Mikey definitely didn't play exceptionally well mechanically or anything. It was like a Hail Mary. Mikey was a Hail Mary, basically. And it almost paid off, realistically. I feel really bad in regards to what's Kaluge and Mikey. Yeah, it was lose-lose for them. Because if you're Mikey and you lose, people are like, why the fuck are you having Mikey in? And they flame the shit of Mikey. And if you're in on Kaluge, then and then and because Kaluge sat out, they're like, why the fuck wasn't Kaluge playing? You know what I mean? It's just, it was so weird. If you only have one week to practice, then you just go with what gets you wins now. It's not what will probably best be best in the end. The thing about that, though, is... Because there was only a week of practice, what you were practicing probably wasn't optimal. That's why we saw no experimentation, pretty much, I think. Because we see contenders now, it's full of shit. You got Sigma, Hog, Arisa, a lot more toned down in Owl, obviously. I don't know. It's just a shitty situation. Even one more week of scrims, we might have saw completely different matchup results. And we might have seen Mikey in full time. I think, I think committing to Mikey was okay. In the end, is what I think. I would have liked to see them commit more in the beginning if they were going to go Mikey in the end, though. Kind of thing. So they'll practice the wrong comp for the limited time. Or maybe they didn't practice it enough. Or maybe they didn't practice other things enough. From Fearless Review, Dallas played the entire Grand Finals incredibly nervous, so Mikey being added in more of the effect. Man got diff tired, just kept feeding and not blocking from pressuring Edison. Couldn't give proper space at all to make the point... Proper had to slide in flank and make all his own space to live wild. Anyway, Smurf back to Shock. Shock will be the best team in the world. Yo, Smurf to Shock would be fucking insane with Max now, by the way. That would be incredible if it happens. Like, Smurf, Smurf to any team makes them immediately a favorite, a, a contender, right? Anyway, I need to go back to fucking ordering this so I can get the S tier. And then, and then I'm done. So I'll put Pelican here. I think I want to put Stalker probably next. Thinking like a Decay angle. Maybe I'll put Decay here. Jimu here. Potty. Lee, whoops. I'll leave there. Happy here. 
Potty, maybe, maybe down here. Maybe down here, now I think about it. It's hard. Um, except Parrot. I feel like this is Mikey Slander. Sure, he got diffed by Fearless, but who didn't? He played the best of his season. That's true. It's just, it's, it's just a fucked up situation. Mikey's not, Mikey's not that good, though. I'm going to be honest. He's he, he Mechanically, I wasn't that impressed, and especially with the limited playtime, it made that shine really hard. It's just unlucky. So getting a pass for the limited scrim time, sure, but you also have to consider Profit kicking the support off Brig. It was as if he had a, a phone call with Changoon. <laughs> what, what do you mean? You mean in the playoffs? You mean Kiriko? Or do you mean whenever he played Brig in the thing? I think playing Brig in the, in the thing, would, like he had to. Because I or because creative was getting traded. Iris wasn't good at Kiriko. Yeah, I agree. Um, happy. Do I want to put MN3 above happy? Probably not, right? Am I rating happy too highly right now? Maybe. Maybe I am. We're putting Sparkle. Hear me out. Smurf proper fits Finn Violet. For Shock? You're you're missing some guys. You're missing He Sang, bruh. Mikey chased a Lucio in a winnable fight with alt advantage and solo through that map. Which map? It was a hard, hard winnable, and they would have won the finals if we didn't do that. Are you talking grand finals? Or no, what, or no, not grand finals. One of the other one thingies. I don't know. I don't know which map you're talking about, that, but something. Yo, I want to put Sparkle all the way down here, maybe. What does this look like for A tier, team? What are we thinking about this? Espa? Oh, okay. Why do Shock fans need He Sang if they get Lip? Hell no. I don't think you can get Lip. Lip is locked up on... Jimmy had a sparkle as bait to me. Sparkle getting shafted a bit. Maybe. Sparkle's hard. Sparkle's hard. Because his Genji was was pretty damn good. It was wasn't like next level. But um it was good. His tracer was like average. He can keep up, at least. His Reaper was pretty good. I think it was probably worse than Pelicans in the playoffs. I think that's valid. And outside of that, that's like that's like his guys, right? He played a little Echo, I think. Not that much. Lip said recently he's not confirmed to be on Shanghai. He could still leave. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what Shanghai wanted to do with the whole netware thing, right? But, I don't know. He... Unless Shanghai let Lip go, or if Lip asks to leave and Shanghai respect it, then he's locked up. He's locked up until he isn't, basically, right? Same as any other player. He's more locked up than every other free agent. You know what I mean? Okay, where would we where is Sparkle going? Above Jinmu? He's probably more consistent than Jinmu. Maybe I'm overrating Jinmu. Sparkle does feel weird to be all the way down there. I do agree. Happy feels high, too, to be honest. What if I move these guys up? I feel like Pelican's been better than Sparkle. Maybe. Something like this. Sparkle is ahead of Hydron. Hydron versus Edison. Hydron wins on every single hero but Reaper. Why is Hydron... Well, you're comparing my third highest in A to my third lowest in A. Worst case, you get Max, he's saying proper, Finn, Violet. How is that worst case? It just isn't saying worst. I don't get it. What do you mean? I think that... What it, I don't I don't get it. 
I'm confused. I could see Fate to Shock. I could too. I could see it. I feel like they want... Mm, I could see it. Is there a clear gap between those players? Basically, worst case scenario is also a good team. Worst case scenario is still the best team in the league, maybe. Well, Edison... Everyone under Patty should drop to B. I'm saying worse isn't not as good. I don't actually mean worse, worse. I mean, I guess adding players can never make you a worse team, technically. Right? And all you did was add players in the other one. Yeah. So, with teams not spending, maybe Shock will be the best team by default. Well, I still think teams like Glads and Toronto will spend. I don't think Venom's dropping to B. I can see... I can see Edison Kai Glister dropping to B. I can't see it. This tier, these guys, def maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. It does maybe look better, too, if I go... Well, what if I keep Glister here just, just because? For the culture. What if I do this? Is this based? This might be based. Edison Sojourn is hot is highly overhyped because Dallas is just the best team. Also, Yaki's downs are vastly ex 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 exaggerated. Stop the disrespect on this man. He carried three years in a row and people still call him inconsistent. I'm not calling well. I'm not calling him inconsistent. It's just that the rest of this fucking roster was ass, and he, he and like the rest of the players in the league got better. So of course he's gonna drop relative to everyone else. Are we saying Yaki had an exceptional better performance than Alpha Yi at times? No. Checkmate even like he was the best on his team by a wide margin, but like that doesn't make him fantastic, you know. I don't know. Like, I think, I think it's kind of like I know I'm a choice A one like super fan, but it's kind of choice A one effect where it's a good player on a bad team, so he makes him look better than he is. Maybe, maybe a choice A one effect. They see him die and call him a feeder, not understanding he has to choose between a slow guaranteed loss or at least try something and gamble with the slight chances of carrying and winning. Yeah, I think that that NYXL did rely too much on Yaki, and that, that making him your game plan isn't isn't like value it's not good but he definitely seems like burnt out and like he's doing too much and that's is his and that's still the fucking game though like it's what's happening he didn't he's not i don't know it's hard it's fucking hard with yaki yaki was in a shit situation but like yeah he could carry sometimes and he was the only one doing anything But he isn't like, I can't think of the wording. I can't think of the wording. It's, I, I can't, I can't put the words that I want to say together. I, I just can't think of it. Yaki had quiet games as well. He had games where he would fucking toss Pulse Bomb into, into the abyss. Like, it's not like he was carrying every single game. You rate people on performance. I rate them on pure skill, ability, talent, and flexibility. Yeah, I rate the. I, I, yeah, I guess it's just a difference in how you want to do your list because I rate it based on what happened. Like this is what happened. This is what happened in my opinion. This is how. Like next season, I'm not saying Kai's gonna be B tier. I don't think Speedily will be B tier. I think Speedily will be much better next season. But this season he wasn't. You know. I don't know. Anyway, I'll do S tier. S tier. There won't be that many players. We're here. And these are all the players left. Um, to start out S tier. It kind of has to be who are you, right? It kind of has to be. Pure skill, wub S tier then. So true. Yaki was a top ten three echo in 2020, last two years mid. I don't know. Yaki's a fucking hard player to rate. I don't think... I think if you look at the guys to his left and the guys above him, he fits more with the guys directly above him than the guys to his left. That's all I think. 
after this season. We'll see next season if he's on a if he's on a better team. We'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, S tier, who are you? Best Genji in the league. Whenever Shanghai was in, make an I don't know tier. <laughs> Choi below, who are you? Okay. This is where the thing with who are you, right? Obviously, he is a Genji one trick. He played a little bit of Tracer. Who are you had higher highs than Choi? I assume you mean? Yeah. He did, and he didn't, and he had better lows as well. So who are you is the best Genji? Straight up. Full stop. To me, best Genji in the league. He made things happen that were not, not supposed to be allowed to happen. And that's why, despite him being a Genji one trick, he is S tier, right? Because his Genji itself is SS. Straight up. So I but because he is only Genji. And he did have to sit out most of the season. It's kind of it's kind of awkward to put him. Maybe I can put him here. And but then there's Choi bias that I want to put Choi above him. You know what I mean? He was in when Shanghai went 15-3. Yeah, he was in when Shanghai. Shanghai are their best with who are you in? 100 percent Not even close. And they should have had him in more often. There were times where they were playing Fleta on Tracer with just straight up. Um, they should have had Who Are You in. They fucked themselves. I think. Who knows? Many people involved with the league think Choi is better, at least on par with Alpha E and Zest. I think they're, I think Choi is better than Alpha E and Zest. Straight up. I put Zest like here. I, I, I low-key want to put, I low-key want to put Who Are You above Zest. But this might be fraudulent. They weren't even 500 without Who Are You. True. Maybe, maybe I'm looking like a this. Maybe I'm looking like a this. Wait, okay. Profits at top of S. I don't think Profits SS, straight up. Zest best stage with KC? I think it was. I think Zest peaked at the beginning. Not to say that the rest of his performances were bad. They were still really good, but to me, KC was definitely his best overall. Zest Summer Showdown was good, but he got dipped by Stalker. And his midseason madness wasn't was good at the end. It was good in the tournament when it mattered. I don't know. This is like th these guys are all fucking good. It's kind of hard. I want to do where do I put Merritt and Sparker as my thing? I think I want to do. I think I want to do this or something. I like Profit over Shy, but I am biased. Choice final blows per 10. Death Tracer Genji was up. Fi final blows per death. Tracer Genji was up there below. Just below proper Kevster and next to Decay. Well above Profit Pelican Zest Alpha e. He was super efficient. Shy was elite in MM and playoffs, but he had like two stages of being okay. I think Shy was elite the entire time. Maybe. Okay, his soldier was kind of weak. I'll, I'll give him that. His soldier was kind of weak. But I think the rest of his stages were fine. We're, we're great. It's just that shot that spark didn't have a backline, man. I was doing so much. I I like I like. Do I want to put lip above Kevster? I want to put lip above Kevster. I want to do this. Shy Summer Showdown was weak. It's hard to say. His team, he didn't have a team. I don't think I I think he performed just as well as he always did. I don't think he had a noticeable drop in his performance. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to decide what I actually want to do with this S tier. Profit, super flexible, super pop off, won a tournament, super clutch when he needs to be. That's his whole thing. Not in regional tournaments, really unlucky there. Um, next, I kind of want to do. I think I want to do Merit. One of the best Sojourns at making things happen. Straight up. He he could make it happen himself. He was super aggressive. The flanks were good. He's aggressive without being like a detriment to his team. Same with Sparker. Sparker and Merritt are very similar to me. I think Mer Merritt has maybe slightly better mechanics. But Sparker did have him. Actually, no. Sparker had a better soldier. For sure. And if I keep take that in mind, I think the soldier ones were roughly similar. I think sp I'll put Sparker above Merritt. Choice A1 has no team for the first half. And then whenever he had a team, he popped off. Who are using the best Genji straight up? Zest just wasn't saying on Tracer Genji. 
the only consistent member of Philly the entire season to be good. Ooh. And then Shy's just the fucking best Sojourn, highest level potential Sojourn. Did was maybe the hardest carry outside of proper. Kevster, super flexible, super high carry potential. Numbers unlike anyone else in the league on other than proper. Lips the best Sojourn, full stop, and proper's the fucking goat. Okay. That's that, I think. To to briefly explain these picks before I end off, which I will be kind of soon, because I kinda gotta go. But yeah. The kid ranked top three in final blows and, and final blows death for ten as a flex player. His tracer is still very, very elite. He, I just mentioned his final blows for death. He is the fourth most deadlift. Proper deserves his own tier. I don't even know if that's true, to be honest. I think that it's it's reasonable to put I can to put proper with these guys. Like Kevster's stats were very close. Proper just did it with less, maybe. I don't know. I think for I think it's okay to keep to keep them all the same. There's an argument shy hard hit scan over lip, especially on Ash, but lip somber and other flex DP flex def better. Yeah. Lip and Shy are like obviously like the elite for me. But yeah. Then Decay had to try late to catch up on Sojourn statistically was a better Sojourn than Edison, Happy Fitz, Leave, and even Shy. I feel like Decay just doesn't show up sometimes, though, man. Like, he just doesn't. I don't know. Maybe this is fraudulent, and maybe it's because, you know, Washington's tempo is ass. But, like, straight up, sometimes you'd be like, Decay is trying to do too much, or he's just fucking AFK or some shit like that. I don't know. Decay isn't this level. He just doesn't. He just didn't have the consistent performances. He didn't go deep enough. He didn't show it in the qualifiers. His flexibility was was crazy and all that. But like, who knows? But anyway, I actually have to go. Like, pretty much right now. So this is gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video. Subscribe it. Subscribe for next time. All that stuff, team. And uh, sorry that this is abrupt, but have a good one.